Time now for question number five. Good morning. I'm Harry Ellen Minahan. I teach at Bancroft School in the Christina School District. I'm an officer in the Christina Education Association and a member of the DSEA Executive Board. My question for you is this. Delaware's charter school law has been around for 13 years. What has worked and what does not? What specific changes would you make and why? Thank you. First question goes to a response, I should say, to Mr. Markell. Well, we know a lot more than we did 13 years ago. We know about some of the successes, but we also know about some of the big problems. Resegregation, the skimming of students, the creaming of students. It's a big issue, and for me, it's a matter of major concern. So I think what we need to do is we need to step back, and we need to say, what is it that we've learned? What does it mean about going forward? I don't believe, some people tend to believe that any charter school that wants to be created ought to be created as a matter of right. I think we're past that. When we look about the concerns, when we, we have to understand the effect that charter schools are having, not just on the students at the charter schools, but the effect that they're having on students in every school. So I think we need to be thoughtful. When we are creating new charter schools, I think we need to go through a process. I think we need to ask the superintendents of the districts which are most affected, which have the most number of sending students, we need to ask them for their impression, their, their interpretation of what effect the new charter school will have on their own students and on their own school. I think we need to make, we, we really need to understand now that the, the charter schools have an effect not just on the students that they're educating, but they have a huge effect on the broader community. We have an awful lot of students attending charter schools in Delaware, and many of them are absolutely benefiting from that, my daughter included, is at the Charter School of Wilmington. But I think it's time for us to recognize that the charter schools are having a much bigger effect than just on the schools they're educating and really on the bigger community. Mr. Carney. Last year there was a, a big issue around the state about conduit bond financing, a fairly esoteric issue as it related to the Delaware Military Academy. The issue really at the time that was underneath that discussion and that debate was what have charter schools done and been here in the state of Delaware and what should they be? At the time, in last September, I read an op-ed piece in the news journal which called for a reassessment of charter schools. What have they done? What haven't they done? I remember when charter, the charter school legislation was passed. They were envisioned to be schools that brought innovation, that, that uh, fit a particular niche or a particular need to add something that didn't currently exist. It wasn't expected that, we, that the state would provide capital funding for these facilities. In fact, the specific agreement was that that would not occur. So we need to assess what has happened since then. We know it's been both positive and negative, and the negative has been very bad. How many remember Georgetown Charter School? We, we just, the fundamental premise is, is flawed, which is charter schools can start, try something new. If it doesn't work, then they can fail. We're, we're, we don't allow charter schools to fail. When they do, it's very disruptive. We need to relook at the whole thing, establish harder criteria for schools, uh, charter schools to be approved, and make sure that they're not duplicating services that are in existing schools. We have an application right now that duplicates a new school in the, in the Christiana School District. That doesn't make any sense to me. Mr. Protak. Charter schools, the process, let me try to address it directly. The process to become a charter school should be arduous, it should be deliberative, it should be somewhat complicated because you're asking for a big stake, things to change. And I know that's scary. If a charter school offers something that's unique and different, I support it 100%. If it's charter school next to, say, A.I. DuPont, just to compete with A.I. DuPont, I'm against that. Because that doesn't serve anybody. Now you're taking money and time and resources and your efforts, quite honestly, to compete against something that's probably doing an adequate job. But again, if it's unique and different, I mean, who knows? Maybe somebody might want to build an aviation school in Delaware. If there's such a thing. <laughs> who knows? But that I would support 100%, because parents want these things. But again, you have to be very careful how you do it. Again, I don't want it to spend time, money, and resources and, and frustrate people by just making it compete against the other schools. That's not the intent. I think that's bad. But if it's unique and different, I support that 100%. Mr. 
Mr. Markell, 30 seconds. Well, I don't believe that unique and different is sufficient. I mean, unique and different is, is necessary, but what's the effect? I mean, if, if, you're, if you have a unique and different school and, and kids and other schools are bleeding as a result, I mean, I look, you, know, you can look at, at so many districts around the state and see the effect. I mean, I, look, I grew up in the Christina School District. And I look at what's happened with some excellent schools, uh, uh, Downs and uh, West Park. What's ha what is happening to those schools as a result of the Newark Charter School? Newark Charter is a great school, no doubt. But you know what? West Park and Downs are great schools, too. And what is going to be the effect on those schools and on those students when new, unique, and different charter schools keep popping up? Mr. Carney. As I said, we ought to develop new criteria for the approval of charter schools. First, we ought to have the discu discussion about what the appropriate role is for that. And in that interim, until we establish those new criteria, we really shouldn't consider new applications. There are some in, in, that are in progress, subject to the, the rules that are in place today, and that's fine. But we ought not consider new applications until we establish a new set of criteria, a, cr a criteria that recognizes the need for a system of education where public schools, the schools in which all of you work, are really the core and the baseline. Mr. Protek. Unique and different is important. If you want the economy of Delaware to grow, you've got to offer something different, something that's going to change things. Now, offering something unique and different doesn't mean you steal away from the people who are already there. I'm not saying that at all. Let's not worry about how we slice up the pie. Let's make the pie bigger and more successful. 